Hi friends, Kaylee with Kaylee's Canvases here. I am hopping on today as promised to paint a fun beach scene with you. Uh, so I, it's a, it's a little bit more of a detailed design than what I normally do. So I'm just going to hop right into it so that way we can get rolling. Um, but we're pretty much just going to do a nice uh, light background. All right, and I'm just using right now I have an 11 by 14 canvas and I'm using a chip brush, a one inch chip brush. Uh, it gives it gives some nice coverage. I, I like the look of a chip brush. Uh, so some people don't, but I do, and it makes for nice quick coverage with some texture too. So I'm just starting, as you guys know, I have my paper plate here of paint that I recycle and reuse every single time. So I just mixed a little bit of like a uh, I think it's called Key West. It's just like a light bluish green I'm going to use for the sky. And I'm blending it in with some white. And I'm just going to come down probably about one third of the canvas. I just want to get that sky in real quick because we got a lot of details in this picture today. And this is the easiest part is the sky. So as you guys know, I always get the edges of my canvases. I think it makes it look a lot more professional, so I encourage you to do the same. All right, and I'm just going to add a little bit more white so it looks like it's kind of um, getting a little bit lighter as it gets to the uh, skyline. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to actually do the sand. All right, and what I'm going to do, the reason for that is because I kind of want uh, the sand to dry before I get my water in there. Uh, so that'll give this a chance to dry for the skyline, not that it makes too much of a difference. Okay. So I'm just rinsing my brush off and I'm going to set it aside. Oh, actually, I'll set it aside in a second after I do the sand. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to get some white because I want most of my sand to be white and I'm going to grab just a little bit of the tan, not a lot, just a little bit of tan. Most of it's going to be white. Alright, let me grab some more white. And I'm just going to go up uh, almost one third like I did with the sky. All right, and, it, and when we do these side to side horizontal uh, strokes, it helps us, and when we do it quickly, it helps us to make a pretty straight line. Not that it really matters because we're going to be covering it up with the, uh, with the ocean anyways, with the water. All right, so I'm just getting my edges. And I would, if you guys do decide to paint along with me, I would love to see your finished results. It's a nice beautiful day outside today. Uh, so there's probably, hopefully you're enjoying the outdoors and watching this on a replay. Um, but I promised to do this today at 4 o'clock so that's why I'm here even though I would love to be outside. Alright, rinse off my brush and set it aside. Um, and just so you guys know I do have my hair dryer with me. Uh, which is very helpful whenever you have to do a quick dry. All right, but I'm just going to set. I'm going to go while this is wet, anyways. Let me see. Okay, I've got a one-inch flat brush. This is not a chip brush. This is a flat brush. I'm going to get it just a slight bit damp. Okay, and for the first step, I've got this. I've got what I'm, I'm using, it's called turquoise. It's kind of like um, a dark teal, all right? But I'm gonna use this for the top of the ocean line. And then we will blend it in with, um, with a nice Laguna color and then some white too. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my brush um, as, as easy as I can, as quick and easy as I can and I'm gonna go straight across and now like I mentioned before if you go kinda of fast 
or you can go like that. If you turn your brush this way, it goes a little bit straighter. But if you go kind of quickly, it makes a straighter line. Anytime that you go really slow, it usually makes a more wobbly line. So just keep that in mind. You could practice with your shoreline or your actually your ocean line, your skyline. And it's not a huge deal if it is crooked because we're going to have some things in here anyways that are going to uh, kind of block it. We're going to have a palm tree here and we're going to have a little tiki hut here. Okay, so I'm going to get my edges like usual. Okay, and I'm going to add in some of that uh, Laguna. It's it's really pretty color. It's like um, it's almost like the turquoise, except it's like a brighter green. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of go do a back and forth um, figure eight motion, and this is going to give me like a nice blended color, uh, so that way it just blends nicely together. Um, so that way you don't have any harsh lines or it's not over blended. You don't want to over blend sometimes, you know, because you then you kind of wash out all that the contrast that you might have. All right, but we are going to keep going most of the way down. We're going to leave a little bit at the end for some white. Get some nice light color in there for the shore when it's close to shore. And if you are watching, I would love for you to say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you want to paint this. The best thing to do, if you missed the beginning, the best thing to do is just share this to your page. So that way you can watch it later. And that way you don't miss out on anything. And, and the nice thing about replays is that you can always um, pause me if I go too fast. Because most artists paint a little bit faster uh, the longer that they've been painting. Um, so now I'm going to grab some white, and I'm just going to go in and do just a little bit of that figure eight motion like I was saying when we did that with the Laguna. i right. got some motorcycles driving by. Don't mind the noise. All right, and we're just going to go st straight across for that shoreline. Okay, remember I always get the sides. And I think I'm actually going to bring my shoreline down a little. I think I might have brought my sand up a little too high for my liking. But that's okay because that gives us some more space for that nice Laguna color. Alright, and notice I'm going side to side with my brush. I'm not going this way, I'm going this way. And again, that gives me that nice, um, that nice straight line along the bottom. But it's okay if it's not straight. It'll just look kind of like a wave coming in. Okay, I want some more of that Laguna in here because I love that color. It's so pretty. Rinse off my brush. I got too much white. If you are watching on YouTube, um, be sure to give this video a like so that way um, more of my stuff pops up in your feed. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so that way you don't miss out on anything. Okay, And if you're watching this on Facebook or, uh, or whatever other means, uh, be sure to like my page and keep current on what's going on. I'm always creating something new. I might not always go live when I should, but I'm always creating something new. So there's usually something new on my Facebook page or on my website. Got a lot of different platforms out there, so sometimes it's hard to keep up with all of them. And remember, if you do paint this, I would love to see it when it's all done. Feel free to send it to me however you like. Facebook Messenger, email. Alright, 
So I think we've got a nice blending here and it's not over blended so it doesn't look completely flat. I've got some nice texture in here, kind of looks like some little waves and ripples coming in. We will add more ripples and waves after. Alright, but that's just the basic. I am uh, going to hit this with a quick blow dryer just so that way I can start to go in with um, the palm tree. All right, but it's literally acrylic paints dry super fast and it's so warm today. That this is only going to take a quick second. So it's not completely dry, but it's dry enough for me to go on to the next step. And you should always remember that whenever you go on to um, to blow dry anything, make sure you're not using too hot of a setting because it can make your paint crack. And that's never a good thing. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with the for the palm tree. And I'm just going to go in with some black. Alright, not a lot of black. I'm going to use um, this brush, um, my one inch flat brush, because even though we want to do some fine lines, I'm going to pull it sideways, it'll give me a smoother line. Alright, but I'm going to figure out where I want, you know, I want to make sure I have enough room for my tiki hut over here, so my palm tree, uh, and I want to make sure I need, leave enough space for the palms up above. So I'm going to start somewhere around here, and I'm just going to drag down to about there. All right, this leaves me enough space all right, to do some palms up here and for my tiki hut over here and then I'm going to have those little signs, the little wood signs, those will be real fun because and we can get really creative with those signs. All right, so I'm just rinsing my brush off the dab because I had a little bit too much paint on there and I'm going to go in and, and I'll show you guys a real easy way to make some palm trees. All right, so I'm still using that one inch flat brush. If you're working with a smaller canvas, you may want a smaller brush um, or you know a larger brush with a larger canvas. Whatever size you're painting on, just be you know make sure you have an appropriate size brush. All right, but pretty much what we're gonna do, um, I'm going to do like a little zigzag here. All right, and this is for like at the top of the tree. There's usually like a little like rough roughness to it. I don't know what it's called. I should probably research it a little bit more. Um, but there's like a little rough bark up at the top. All right. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the kind of like a triangle shape, not complete triangle, but I'm going to go in and I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to make it bigger as I go down. And it's okay that like right now it's not solid. It is blending in with some of that white. We're going to add some brown in and we're going to add in some teal and some some orange. Um, in my original painting that I did, I used coral, but I actually ran out of coral paint. So I'm just going to use some orange paint, which is okay too. All right, so I'm kind of just going sideways and creating that kind of a triangle shape. All right, and my recommendation is you can always start off smaller because you can always go bigger. It's easier to go bigger, it's harder to take away. So if you're doing this, just be just be careful how big you want your palm tree to be, or how wide I should say. Every every palm tree is unique. There's so many different kinds that it's it really it's not gonna be a big deal if it's a little off or if it's different. Your palm tree will look different from mine, and even this painting that I do is going to look different from the original. It usually always does. And as I get down to the bottom, I'm just getting a little bit bigger. Not much, just a little bit. And we're 
we're going to add in some of those other colors later on to highlight it. So it's going to look really fun. And like I said, you guys know I always get the edges of my canvas. It just makes it look more professional and complete. But if you're going to frame it, then you really don't have to do the edges of your canvas. Okay, so I've got that. And next I'm going to work on my uh, palms. All right, so I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to use this for the palms because I don't want the palms to be too thick. And I just want to say, if anybody is online right now, I'm very sorry, but Facebook is not showing me who's online and it's not showing me if there's any comments. So if I miss something, I do apologize. Um, and I'll be sure to follow up with it after the video is done. Um, but anyways, so we're going to move on to our palm uh, leaves and I'm not really sure what they're called like the spine or whatever of the palm uh, so we're just gonna go actually we should make some little coconuts that's all right so we'll do little circles nothing major just some little twirly circles all right, and we'll add some color to these after just getting some in there. All right, and then I'm gonna, so I'm using a fine liner brush for this and I'm gonna go ahead and, and make some, some palms coming out. All right, and, and depending on where your palm branch is, you might make it a different shape. So as you're coming out, it'll kind of look like that. Okay, and maybe if it's coming from the top, it'll be more of a straight line. Okay, and but as it's going out on the side, it's going to look more curved. And then if it's like really close, really far out on the side, it's going to look even more curved. All right. And you just do as many, you know, we're not going to add the palms on yet. Right now we're just doing the spine of the palm. All right, and so we're just getting a basic shape. Don't worry if it's not perfect right now. We are going to add to it later on to make it look even better. Okay, so some of these I want to hang down real low and it's okay if it comes down past the water line because it really all depends on where your perspective is. So when we're, when it's all said and done, it's going to kind of look like we're a little bit further back up on maybe like a hill, a little bit behind the tiki hut. All right, so next, just to get in, the reason I'm not adding any palms on is because I definitely want to make sure I get the placement of my tiki hut correct. So I'm going to go back to that large flat brush just so I can get some nice straight lines. And I'm using some black, but not a lot of black. This is just for placement. All right, so I want to make sure it comes up high enough. Actually, do I want to start there or with the base? I think I'll start with the base, actually. I'm going to start with the bottom, and we can always add the, the top on after. All right, I got to make sure I leave enough space for my sign. All right, so I'm going to come to about right here, and I'm just going to go straight across pretty much... To the edge not quite not over the edge just pretty much to the edge okay and then I'm gonna have this come down let's see where do I want it to come down I want it to hang out a little bit like there's a countertop okay and we got to make sure we leave enough room for like a little path and uh, a surfboard all right so right now I'm just making a quick basic shape. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna fill that in after. All right. I just want to get an idea so that way I don't have things uh, covering up other parts. All right. So now I'm gonna go in just a little bit there, and I'm gonna make that come down. Probably about the, and I want to stay about the same height. 
okay so this is just going to be like a stand that's holding up the top of the tiki hut okay all right now this gives me more of a perspective on the top Right. And I kind of want it to be a little bit curved because it's going to be a grass top. All right. And I'm just going down just to give it just an impression. We're not really filling anything in yet. We're not doing all the details. Just to kind of give us an idea when we move forward. All right. And as you can see, my sky is still just a little tiny bit wet because it's mixing in with my black which is okay okay so next we could do the leaves on the palms All right, I'm gonna go back to my fine liner brush and if you're just joining us we're just painting a fun beach scene um, and I would love for you to paint along with us all right, so I'm just going to use very little black for this. All right, we want we want a lot of highlights and colors in here, so highlights and lowlights. So we're going to put um, some black in here. We're going to layer it with some green and then some light green and then even some maybe some uh, yellow green and some uh, some white. All right, so this is just going to give it a nice idea of a full uh, palm tree. Okay, so I'm going to start. I may even have to turn this sideways. It's okay if you have to turn your painting. All right, we're not going to overfill it because if we overfill it, when we add the layers, it's just going to kind of cover each other up and we're not really going to see. It's just going to look like one big leaf instead of a whole bunch of little palms. Okay, so we're going to leave it a little, little in between. So that way we can add in that green and stuff too. But I want the black to definitely dry before we add in some of that green because I don't want it to uh, mix in and then we don't end up with any real green in our palms. And if, you're, if your paint looks a little grainy as you're going, just it's okay to uh, water down your brush just a bit. And that will uh, thin out your paint and make it look a little bit less grainy. Okay. And so for these ones, because of the way that they're laying, I'm only going to do palms on like one side because you're only going to see the one side as they're hanging. But this one here that's kind of sticking straight up in the air, I'm going to do it on both sides. Alright, so I'm just leaving some space in between so that way I have room to add the other colors later. Alright, and I'm going to do it on both sides. And if you do the edges of your canvas like I do, make sure you get up at the tippy top. Okay. And let's see now on to other parts, other palms. All right. And remember when you're painting, it'll give you a smoother line if you paint with little pressure and um, a quick movement it'll give you a nice fine straight pretty semi straight line because we don't want it to be perfectly straight but we want it to be straight enough that um, it doesn't look like all choppy okay and for those thinner lines uh, that's where you apply less pressure Okay, remember to leave a little bit of space. Sometimes I forget when I'm making palms. It really depends on what kind of uh, palm tree I'm painting. I think I'm going to add another palm here. And you can add as many palms or branches or whatever you want to call them to your painting as you want. This is your painting. 
And like I said, it doesn't have to look like mine. You can get creative with your placement. Just be careful that you don't that you leave enough room for other pieces of the painting. And get creative with the colors. It's always fun when we see like the same painting in different colors. It's super cool. So I'm just going in and adding those palms. And the ones that are hanging lower, sometimes the palms are a little sad looking. Uh, almost like they're uh, half dead. And they kind of lay a little closer because of gravity. You kind of, when I do, when I paint things, I kind of keep, I try to keep gravity and light and proportion in mind. So I'm just adding in more palms wherever I feel would be nice and add to the picture. Okay. Alright, so while the black is drying, we'll move on to the brown in the top here. And we could even add in some of our brown in the trunk of the tree as well. Okay. Sometimes brown can be a little bit of a transparent color, uh, a little bit see-through when it comes to paint. I'm not quite sure why, uh, but that's okay because we don't really need a lot. So we're just going to add just a little sweep where you can still see the black in there, but we're still getting that hint of brown. So the, the transparency kind of works for us in this picture because we can still see the black shining through. And I'm just kind of doing some zigzag motions there with my the top of my tree. And I'll even add in a little bit of brown to the coconut coconuts. Okay. And then we'll get some brown in the top of this. Maybe mix in with a little bit of black since our black kind of got washed out. All right, so I just grabbed, you can see, the brown with just a touch of black to give us some, some contrast. All right, and we're going to add some highlights to it after. We're, we're going to add some tan, uh, and we'll add some, uh, some white, and even some teal and some, some uh, well, not coral, because I ran out of coral, but some orange, or whatever color you want. And we'll add in some more highlights and lowlights to this afterwards, too. Okay, so we pretty much got that covered. So while we're waiting for everything to dry, we'll go down here and we'll work on this. I might want just a little bit more brown in here. All right, so I'm gonna do, down here, I don't want it to be as dark. I will add a little bit of black, but I want this to look more like some, like a different kind of wood. Uh, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go across in all brown. All right, and we'll add the tan highlights in. So right now I'm just going across in brown. It's okay, I haven't rinsed off my brush yet, and it's okay if I still have a little bit of black in my brush or a little white because a little bit of the white and tan is blending in from the sand, but that's okay. Because we want a nice mixture of color in here, but we don't want the blue to shine through. We will add some blue, but we don't want it to be the same, um, the same direction as the water's going. It's gonna go in a different direction. Okay, and I'm gonna go over that black line with the brown. I'm just turning my brush sideways. If you want to use a fine liner brush, that's completely okay if you feel more confident with that. And remember, if I'm, oops, it's all right. No such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents, right? As our friend Bob says. Um, but 
Uh, anyways, I lost my train of thought. But that's okay. So we're just going to go in with that brown, covering everything up. We might have to, we're going to have to do a second layer. That's okay. Okay. So you can see, so I went sideways with this. And that just gives me a thicker line. It gives the impression that there's like some wood holding it up. All right, I'm just going to go over it a little bit so it doesn't, so it looks like the grass is in front of the, the wood there. All right, and when you, whenever you do second coats, you, you pretty much need to wait for the first coat to dry before you do a second coat, unless you're doing a wet on wet technique, which is not always easy to do because you have to use a lot of paint for that and a little bit of practice. Okay, I think I might even want this to come out just a little bit further. Okay, and we'll add in some more colors too. Just getting basic shapes. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to dry so we can do our second layer of brown, we're going to go back into the palms here because our black is pretty much dry and we'll do that dark green. Okay. And we're just going to do the same thing and we're going to kind of do it in between each, uh, each palm. So depending on your green, like my green is a little translucent, which is nice because it gives it the, like the effect of like a dark green and a light green uh, mixed in, which I kind of like. Anything that makes the painting a little bit easier is always good. Okay, so I'm just using the same brush stroke motion that I used before. I'm trying to go in between the black. We don't want to do too many because we want to make sure we don't look like we have just one big giant um, leaf. We want to make sure we got some separate palms here. And now that we, we're doing the green, we can kind of have our palms hanging down a little bit lower. And if you have to turn your canvas to paint, definitely feel free. Sometimes when I'm painting, it's all, it's easier when I turn my canvas. Especially if you're, you know, left-handed, right-handed, depending on which side of the canvas you're painting on. Okay. I'm just filling this in. turn it sideways so I can do the other parts of my palm. Okay, I'm going to keep going around and we'll add in some other colors after. So the, one of the cool things about this painting is the signs that go over here. I'm kind of excited because you can, like I said you, before, you can get really creative with the signs. Uh, so something like a, there's a beach sign that I always thought was cute. It says, sun's out, buns out. Um, so not that, you know, not that we all do that, but it is kind of, kind of a cute saying. Alright, so I'm just going through with some more green just to finish up all these palms. Remember to still leave a little bit of space and you want to make sure you have, you know, clear distinct palms. You don't want it to be one big palm. Okay. 
let's see. So I'm just going in, I'm almost done with this green, and then I'll add some more color to the uh, trunk of the palm tree. Okay, this is, I love, you know, whenever you're first starting off with a painting and, you know, you're working on it and you're like, it always, it looks weird whenever you start something off and you're, you know, you have the basic just going on so do me a favor don't ever judge your painting till it's done because um, you'll notice as the steps progress it gets a little bit better and better at each time all right so um let's see what do we want to do next um next we will do the brown is almost dry here i'm gonna add in some tan up on top so I'm going to go back in, and it doesn't matter which brush. You could do this with a chip brush or the flat brush. The chip brush is cool because the bristles are so, you know, messy that it give, it'll give it that nice texture. But I'm going to go in with this, and I'm just going to... And if, like, some of my... Actually, it might be better if I do the chip brush. Um, so I'm probably going to go in with a chip brush. I don't want to cover it all in one color. So let me see. I want to get a nice mixture of color here. So yeah, there we go. It gives, let's see, Oops. just be careful when you're doing a chip brush because you might end up with a little bit of those. I can actually touch that up. Whenever you make a mistake, you can either make it a little wider or you can use a, um, a baby wipe is always good for getting mistakes off. See? Baby wipes are great for that. As long as the paint is still wet. Alright, I think I'm going to stick with actually my large flat. You can do, like I said, you can do whatever brush you're comfortable with. You can do a, a flat, a chip, a fine liner brush. I'm going to go in with some, some white on parts of this. Okay. I'm just going to do some quick light drags on the tiki because it'll make it look um, a little bit straighter, but it's going to give it an impression. So I'm just going to go in doing some more tan. I'm just layering this and so the more layers you have with this part, the more it's going to, it's going to look more full. Okay. So I'm going to need some more brown on my plate. And I'm just going to go in and just keep layering until I'm happy with the colors that are that are in the Tiki Hut. Alright. And I'm probably going to even want to add in some some black too for that contrast. I almost I think I kind of got rid of all my contrast. Okay. I don't want a lot for this step. Because I don't want to overpower the other colors, but I want to make sure that I have enough black that I can get some contrast. And if you want to wait for parts of your your tiki hot top to dry before you go in with some more, that's fine too. Okay. I'm just adding different layers. Let's see. And try to make it all look like it's coming out from the same spot. Alright. I might have to wait a little bit till this dries to get some more in because my black is starting to look like gray now. Okay. So I'm going to go in with some more brown down in here, okay, so I can get that other layer. Actually, I could probably start doing the tan. So I'm going to use tan and brown, all right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create 
like little um, slats of wood. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit. I've got, I mixed some tan and brown, so it's like a light brown. I'm just going to do a little line down the side. You can do this with, with whatever brush you feel most comfortable with. All right, I'm going to do a little bit on the top here. All right, and we will add some black highlights as well. All right, but now I'm going to do, um, I'm going to make a couple lines. Let's see. So that way I know what I'm working with. So this is just to look like some wood slats. All right. And I'm just going to go in and I'm kind of going to just at the edge of each slat, I'm just going to pull in with this tan. Pull in very short and quick. And it's going to give it an illusion of wood slats. Okay. And if I need to reload my brush, I can. And we'll add in some more colors too. Like I said, we're going to add in some of the blue, white, black, some of the coral. Or whatever colors you want to use. Okay. You can go as far in as you want or as short as you want, but I want this to look pretty um, light in color, so I'm going to pull it in pretty far. Okay, and we will also, we'll do the path in a little bit so we at least have that set up. And then we'll get some other little details in in a second. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now I have the slats for that. That's looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to rinse my brush, and then I'm going to pull in some black on that part. All right, and for once this dries, the little details will add in with the fine liner brush so we don't get too many uh, thick lines. All right, again, you can use fine liner brush or your flat brush, whatever you want to do for... Um, for this shadow part. So I'm just going to take it straight down on the other side, the opposite side of the light, and we'll add some more brown in so that way it's not such a sharp color. Unless you like the sharp color, that's good too. All right. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of that black and just go in very gently from the other side not a lot. I have very little black on my brush right now and that's literally simply because black is such a bold powerful color it does not take much to get um, it does not take much to overpower the colors on your on your canvas so when you're doing this just be careful that you don't overpower it too much alright so I'm gonna I didn't wipe the black off I'm just gonna because I had very little on just going to go in with the brown and a little bit of the tan, but I want to make that little path, all right? So I'm going to, it's kind of going to be just like a little back and forth, all right? It just, and it's nothing crazy. It's just going to look like there might be uh, just some little footsteps, like it's definitely a well-traveled area. People are coming up to this tiki bar. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We'll go in with just a little bit of the brown right here for me. You don't have to. Okay. All right. So before we go on to anything else, my palms are still drying. All right, so rather than use the blow dryer, I'm going to let them dry a little bit more. And I'm going to start with the basic shape for the, um, the sign here. So I'm going to go in with a tiny bit of black, um, but mostly brown. All right, and I'm just going to start pretty high because I'm going to have a few. So I'm going to have like four signs on this. So I'm going to start probably somewhere around here, and I'm just going to pull it down about there 
All right, and I kind of, uh, it's going to be crooked because I want it to kind of fit that whole beach thing. I, if, if you've noticed, like, any signs on the beach, fences along the beach, they're all crooked and tipped over because sand is not stable. All right, so I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to make kind of like a crooked line here. Okay. And you can see it kind of made like a nice thick line there, which is good. That's what we want. All right, and then we'll do the lines across as well. And it's going to overlap a little bit with the palm tree, but that's okay. All right, I'm kind of, let's see. There we go. All right, so I'm going to mix up a little brown, a little tan, a little black. Might need a little bit more. We're going to get... Uh, that same kind of color going on for the signs as well. I just, I used a little, too little paint this time. Okay, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to just go across. And my signs are going to be, um, you know, in different directions. So they don't have to be perfect. Start off with, but you want to make sure they're thick enough that you can um, that you can have space to write on them so whether you have like a paint marker or maybe you have um, just a fine liner brush or a gel pen or whatever you plan to use at the end uh, you know you can do whatever just make sure it's thick enough however you're gonna write on these okay let's see Okay, and I have another one in here. This one's going to be real crooked. Okay. And again, don't, don't get frustrated if it's not perfectly straight. It's not going to be. We don't want it to be. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can go in, let's see, what do I want to add? What do I want to add? Let's see, I'll just... I think I'll, I'll start adding the grass um, here, around here. So I'm just going to use my fine liner brush for that. I'm probably going to mix a little bit of green with some brown and some black to kind of get like a, you know, seagrass color. All right, and I'm just gonna, you don't want too much black or else it'll look completely black. All right, but I'm just getting, it's peeking up and growing over here. I could even add a little bit of green in here if I wanted to, but we're gonna add some teal in here too, so don't worry. But honestly, all the different colors can't hurt. And green kind of gives it a natural tiki hot look. Okay, and we'll even add some around here. Okay, you could add this grass wherever you want to, but for now I'm just adding it around here. Okay, I don't have to worry so much over here because we're going to have a surfboard leaning up against there. Okay, and then I'm going to add in, I gotta get a little bit more um, of that sandy, messed up sandy beach look in front of here. Not a lot, just like a little shadowy thing. Okay. Okay. So, our next step, we could add in while we're waiting for some of that other stuff to dry, we'll add in the little ripples for our water. Okay. And 
you want very thin lines for this. So especially the ones that are further out are going to be really thin lines. Uh, so again, you want to just make sure that you have your fine liner brush. We're going to go straight across. It can have a little bit of curve to it. A little bit of like it's a, almost like a wave. Um, but we want very little pressure back here because this is this is far away. So it's got to be very thin. Okay, if you need to water down your paintbrush, apply very little pressure. We want it to be thin. As it gets a little closer, it's okay if it's a little bit thicker. But we don't want it to be too thick. So we're still doing very little pressure. Just adding some of those ripples in. And you can add more the closer that you get to the shore because there's usually more waves breaking close to the shore. And like I said, they can get a little thicker as you get close to the as closer to the shore. Just add as many as you feel comfortable with. All right. Yeah, I think we got a good amount there. All right, so now I'm going to add in some colors on here. I'm going to do some of that turqu uh, the Laguna color I have. It's kind of like a turquoise. Um, so I already have some on my plate. I just, uh, let's see. And I'm just going to add in just some fun colors, like, like a little highlight. Okay. And just, just place them wherever, kind of like a little, little outline. It might make it look a little cartoonish, but that's okay. It's just fun. Fun colors. Okay, so we got some of that in there. Now we can add in some of that color into the tiki as well. Right? You don't want to use a lot of pressure. We're going to go with that same kind of motion. We don't want this to be too thick, just enough to kind of give it like a fun, fun color, make it stand out and pop. But, whoops, a little too much there, but that's okay. We'll roll with it. And we'll, let's see, even add in a little bit of that in here, just a little bit into the palms, not a lot, just a nice, nice little color. Remember, you don't want your palms to be too thick, but I really like the way this looks against the green. Okay, and we're going to add in some of that bright yellow as well. Let's see, we got to add in a little bit around here too. Okay, make it look a little rough. Maybe like it's some old paint or something. Alright, no rhyme or reason really. Just adding in some color. I probably don't even need to add much around there because we're going to have uh, our surfboard leaning up against there. We'll get the basic shape for that in next, actually. I'm For this next part, I am going to use my fine liner brush. All right, and I'm going to go in with the orange. Because, uh, like I said, I don't have any coral for some reason. <laughs> Ran out. All right, so I'm going to go in... 
and I might even blend it with a little bit of pink to give it that coral color but I'm just gonna go right about here and just do a basic shape and make it look like it's leaning against uh, it's leaning against the um, the tiki I think I'm going to add a little bit of pink. My orange is a little translucent, so if it's a little translucent, you can mix it with another color, make it fun, do whatever color you want. All right, so I'm going to mix some orange, some pink, and maybe a hint of white will give me that nice. There we go. The white actually breaks up. So if ever your any of your colors are tra too translucent, you can meaning you can see through it, um, and it's not covering some of those other colors you can always mix a, a touch of white with it and it will give it like a, a thicker, bolder um, color that will cover other things. Alright, so I'm just going to go in. I'm going to make kind of like a little um, pointed end on it. And we'll add some designs to this after it's dry. I'm going to get some of that pink and white in there, or pink and orange. I think I added a little too much white, but that's all right. Just painting the basic shape and filling it in. Nothing crazy right now. We'll add some cute little designs to this in a, in a minute once it's dry. Okay. All right, so we got our surfboard. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And we're gonna go in with that same color on parts of the palm tree and even in here too. And, oops, I made a mess. Don't mind me, guys. Sometimes we spill. That's okay, you just use a dry paper towel to clean it up and it'll dry fine. Okay. Sorry about the clumsiness today. Alright, so I'm going to go in with that coral color that I made using orange and pink. And I'm just going to add in some of those like little, little color like I did for the turquoise. I'm just going just adding a little bit of color. Okay. And it just pop it makes it pop out a little bit more. All right, we'll add a little bit of that into here as well. All right, maybe not too much, just enough. We already got the orange, um, no. okay. So, just adding little highlights of color really makes it start to pop out, and we could even add in a little bit of orange and teal on our signs. Maybe not the teal, but we'll do some orange. Kind of give it some nice little highlight from the sun. It's been kissed by the sun. Okay. And it'll kind of break it up for us too against the palm tree. We can add in some tan too to lighten it up. I'm pretty much just adding things in where I where I see that it's needed. I don't want to add in too much tan because it'll mute it out a little bit. So what, that way, when I do the the white lettering, we won't really be able to see it as much. So I just wanted to give you want to mostly concentrate your bright colors around the edges, and we'll add in some black too uh, for like a little shadow on each of these things. Okay. 
So let's see. I'm next. I'm gonna do a yellow orange. Let's see. I didn't pull one out. I'm gonna do a, a, like a lime green. It's called. Oh, actually, it's called lime tree. It's perfect. I'm gonna do a lime green um, in my palm so that way it makes it stand out just a little bit more. All right, and I'm gonna do it just like I did before with the other ones. All right. I don't need to add a lot to this though because it's such a bright color and I don't want to wash out my other colors. I just need literally just a hint, you know, little flakes of the sun shining through on things. Just be careful not to stick your finger in any wet paint because I will definitely do that. Okay. Remember. If you do too much, it's going to end up looking like um, one big giant leaf rather than a whole bunch of palms. Okay, and not a lot, just getting in a little. Okay, I'm going to go to this side. I'm going to do some over here. Let's see. Okay. Almost. And it's okay if you might have a little bit more on one side than the other because maybe the sun is hitting one side more than the other. Like I envision the sun coming in over here and that's why we got our shadow and sand cast over there. Okay. Almost done. I really love the way that this palm tree is turning out. It's so bright and vibrant. I'm just going to add maybe a little bit there. Maybe even get a little bit in on this top of this tree. I really like this green. Okay. Might even add, let's see, this. So this will also be, if you didn't have like a lime green, you could always just add in like mix green and yellow that'll give you a lime green. Um, I'm going to do the uh, the martini next. I'll do it right here. So whenever you're doing a martini, all right, and we want to give it a glass effect too. So I'll show you how to do that as well. But so for a martini, we're gonna do like a U shaped, okay? All right, so we got our U. We're gonna go straight across, fill it in. All right, and then we're going to, we're still using that lime green color. We're going to go down and make like a little smaller U underneath it. Okay. And you can make it as wide, as big as you want. I mean, I've seen some seriously big margaritas. Or you can make it as little and petite as you want. Alright, so I made sure to leave a little bit of space for the stem. Alright. So I've got that going for that. Alright, and also now for the glass effect. Alright, because whenever you have a glass, you're going to have different colors reflecting it out of it. You're going to have colors reflecting from the water and everything, and you're going to have some white and stuff reflecting from the sun. So to get a hint of that water in, since we're doing such a small, tiny margarita on here, it's important to use our fine liner brush. For this, you're going to want a really light hand, okay? Make sure you have a really fine point on your paintbrush as well. All right, so I'm dipping it in, getting a fine point on my brush, and I'm going to go around the edge of it here. All right, I'm going to touch the edge of it here with the white. Okay, uh, and, but then on the other side, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap, and that's going to give me that effect of water reflecting on the glass. All right, so I just have the tiniest amount of blue showing through, and I'm going to go gently across a little bit over top, too. All right, and I'm just kind of curving it just slightly at the edges. All right, I don't need to add a lot of white over here. Um, and then I'm going to go straight down with the stem. And 
just do like a half rounded little base here. All right, sitting right on top of the table. All right, and we'll just add like a little kind of like a choppiness on here for some salt or sugar. I prefer sugar on the rim. All right, and let's see. We can even do the lime. All right, so I'm going to go back for that uh, lime green color. And I'm going to come to the corner of the glass and I'm going to make kind of like a rounded shape there. All right. For the rind, the peel, whatever you want to call it, of the lemon, I'm going to use the darker green. I don't want to do too much. So if you're too scared to do this, you can kind of just leave it out if you want. But I'm just doing the bare minimum and I'm just kind of dragging some green through there so we got our lime okay Let's see. I feel like I have too much white shining through on this side so I can even go back in with green and I wouldn't mess around with this too much this is not really the most important part of our painting okay but it is a nice little touch Okay, all right, so I've got my margarita. All right, and I'm going to add in, next I'm going to add in just a little bit of white on here because we're getting pretty close to being done. I still need my orange to be dry for um, my surfboard, but we're getting really close, guys. Let's see. I can add in a little bit of white. No, I already had a little bit peeking through, but I just wanted a little bit more for some highlight. Okay. Just going to kind of swipe it through real quick. Just give the effect of sun shining on these little palms, whatever makes the top of these tiki huts. All right, and I'm going to also add in a little bit of white here. I don't want a lot because I already got some tan. All right, and a little bit of the, for the top here. Don't want to wash out my orange though. All right, so now we're going to add in a little bit down here, probably more down here. All right. I mean, you can add in the white wherever you think it would look best. I try to leave like certain colors to one side, like lighter colors to one side, darker colors to others, so it looks more like a, a you know, light reflecting and shadow and stuff like that. Okay, you don't want to forget over here. All right. Oh, and we also don't want to forget our black shadow around around our signs. All right. So those are dry. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to make like a very thin line underneath it. It's just going to just supposed to look like a shadow underneath. Give it a three dimensional look to it. Can even add in a little bit on this side. Just be careful not to go through your wood slats if you're going to do it on the side of the thing there. Okay. Alright, just adding the shadow to make it look 3D. We'll also add in some black on the Tiki Hut too. We'll get there. Alright, so a little bit there. We already had some black, but we're just going to add in a little bit more. Maybe some down at the base. And we'll add in uh, some sand down here as well. And in this painting, a lot of my paintings are pretty basic and simple, but this one I think has some nice touches to it. Uh, nice little details that I don't usually do on all my paintings whenever I'm teaching people how to paint. But just enough to make it fun. Alright, so next I'm going to add in some white highlights on my palm tree. And um, and then we'll go in, hopefully, if, if we have to hit the surfboard with the blow dryer, we will. Okay. 
All right, so for this, again, we want very little white in the palms because our palms are looking pretty good. All right, not a lot. All right. Don't want a lot. Oops, that one was a thick one. So very little pressure when you're doing this. So I did too much there. I'm just going to kind of wipe it off a little bit. I can always go back in with some black to kind of correct that if I need to. I, I don't want a lot of white. I'm just doing very little white. Very little white. do a little bit of white over here. We have a lot of colors going on in this palm tree, which is wonderful. Okay. I'm going to uh, touch up that one part where I put too much. So I'm just going to add, I could do a little black or a little green, whatever works best. I don't want to totally get rid of the white though. Okay, so just add in, there we go. All right, so next we're going to do, we're still waiting on that surfboard to dry. So we might as well do the words because now this is pretty much dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my white and I'm going to make sure that I have a fine point on my paintbrush. And the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to write margaritas. All right. And you can do this however you like. All right. You can do it in any handwriting. This is going to look like an old, uh, it's going to look like an old uh, handwritten sign. Let's see. This is paint my the tip of my paintbrush is getting a little bit curved. Let's see, Margaritas. All right, so I've got my S here, and then I'm good. So I got Margaritas as one sign, and then I'm gonna do jet ski rentals, or I could do surfboard rentals. I think I did jet ski rentals on my first one. This one I'll do surfboard rentals. All right, and it's okay if the letters are thick or thin or different on each one. Let's see, so I've got surfboard rentals. All right, so each one looks just a little bit different, and that's okay. The next one is my favorite sign. Uh, sun's out, bun's out. Alright, so that's a lot to write on one, so be mindful of your the size of your lettering. Sun's out. Bun's out. All right, and then our last one is just going to say either relax or chill, or I think we'll just put relax. There we go. So I got all that. I'm going to hit my, um, we only have the surfboard left to do, so I'm just going to hit my surfboard with the blow dryer because it's too wet to paint anything on it. Okay. So I'm going to use my fine liner brush again. All right. And I'm just going to paint some cute flowers and some stripes on this. 
And you can do this any direction that you want to. All right, so I just got, oops, sorry for hitting the camera. Just got a stripe here. I'll add a couple different color stripes as well. All right, I've got a little flower. I think it's called a hibiscus flower, I think. All right, and they pretty much look like C's uh, all coming together, like the letter C all coming together with a little bit of space in between them. All right, sometimes you try to get five petals, sometimes you can only get four, depending on how big your brush is. Um, and then you just leave a little space and we just take it and go like this. And we have our little hibiscus flower and do a couple little dots around it. Okay, and then we do another one and we'll also make sure we get in some more lines, but since I got the white out, All right. All right, it's kind of hard to do them with a small paintbrush. But we'll get them. All right, and we'll just do our little line with a couple little dots around it. And then we'll do two last colors. We're almost done. All right, so I've got a light blue, which was the one I used for the sky, I think. <laughs> okay, so I'm just following that same line, starting thin, making it a little wider as I go down. It just adds for just a nice, you can decorate this surfboard however you like. You can write your name on it. You could uh, paint different flowers, different colors. I love seeing people's different creations. So remember, if you're painting this, send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Um, and also, if you're still watching this, I would love for you to like my channel, subscribe so you don't miss anything. Uh, make sure you like my page if you're watching on Facebook. like this video all right so we have our painting and I can't wait to paint with you again thank you so much oh don't forget to sign your work never forget to sign your work all right I can't wait to paint with you guys again. Thanks so much for painting with me, and I will talk to you soon.